When applications for the post of Vicar of Carshalton Beaches closed recently, a healthy 17 clergy had stated their desire for the job. Now, that's not uncommon for parishes in the south of England. Indeed, a rich parish near Paddington in London is reported to have received 123 applications. But the Lee list, which contains the names of clergy looking for jobs, shows almost twice as many interested in the southeast as in the north of England. Parishes there can be without a priest for two years or more. And local church leaders leaders have warned that it's undermining an already fragile organisation. Our religious affairs correspondent Robert Piggott has been to Durham, the poorest diocese in England and the one with the smallest congregations, to find out why so few are heeding the call to serve. We could have 200 folk cramming the pews here on a Sunday morning, but are you honestly going to tell me it would actually improve your faith? The Reverend Graham Buttery, the vicar of St Oswald's in Hartlepool, tells the 40 or so people scattered across the cavernous church to celebrate the good things in their community. But in truth, their problems are formidable. High rates of crime and unemployment, a third of adults without any qualifications and more than a quarter of children living in poverty. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For what we eat. What eat. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. Amen. Graham Buttery and his wife Gillian are bringing up three children in a vicarage that looks like a fortified outpost. I see someone has put their feet through the inner door or tried to, and you've got bars on the windows. Why, why is that? My predecessor's wife was mugged in the back garden. I've worked in these sort of parishes all my life and I've been stoned before now and spat upon and all sorts of things. There is the Christian ethos of evangelism and where do you start evangelism? You can't just do it in the congregations you already have. You've got to go to where the church is weak or non-existent. It also damages our profile because if we're seen to be either in leafy places or non-existent, to be seen to be absent can indeed damage the church. This little settlement of High Clarence, or Port Clarence, a part of Billingham near Middlesbrough, is possibly the epitome of what many faint-hearted clergy thumbing through the church times or looking on the internet might think of as the problems of a post in the north. Here in Beach Avenue, almost all the houses, all except two, are boarded up with metal sheets. With me is the area dean for the Church of England, the Reverend David Brook. You can see why people would be reluctant to take a job up here. It was hard work getting somebody to look at this place, but... We felt that we'd pulled something together here, which was an inspiring and exciting package. And eventually, the one right person came along. The process was hard. It was dispiriting at times. And that's part of the pattern in the northeast, as you know. Let us shine brighter with your spirit. Deprived of full-time clergy in Billingham, lay Anglicans at St Luke's regularly take services themselves. Lord, in your mercy. They say people will increasingly have to lead worship, but they warn Billingham's five parishes have suffered for lack of a priest. Lay people are very capable of leading the service, but you do need some figurehead link that can progress whatever is there. It would be good for the youth of the area to have more vicars, because I think without the leadership, the congregation does eventually dwindle. A recent church report warned that amalgamating parishes in the face of lower clergy numbers promotes decline. But Billingham's new team rector, the Reverend Laura McWilliams, insists that merging its parishes will remove artificial boundaries and pull the church members' energy. I think that it creates community in a real way over an entire town. I think any separation in any way always brings division. And the community see that, and we can work in the community much more effectively as a whole. Contrast Billingham or Hartlepool with Carshalton Beaches. Here in the quiet tree-lined streets of substantial houses in the Surrey suburbs of London. 16 priests have applied for the post of vicar at this church, the Church of the Good Shepherd, a large Spanish-style grade 2 listed building, and judging from the website it hums with activities. As if all this were not inducement enough, the website also provides an estate agent's take on the vicarage. It's a superb detached family home, we're told, situated in the well-established tree-line setting of Beaches Avenue. It's in parishes like this that so many clergy seem to want to serve. We have been called out 
darkness into God's marvellous light. It took two years of advertising to find a priest for Holy Trinity in Hartlepool. On a dark Sunday evening, the Reverend Ros Hall presides over a service of healing, anointing some of the sparse congregation with holy oil. A former priest here, who went to London, accused clergy, who refused to work in the north, of failing in their duty to go where the need was greatest. Ros Hall tries to be diplomatic. I think that's sad. I mean, there aren't any jobs. It's really difficult for people to find a meaning in their life and any hope. And I think it is a place where clergy should come to help people. We should be here doing what we're called to do. Inside the squat, brick, 1950s church, candlelight flickers cosily against whitewashed walls and woodblock floors. Among the streets outside, there are multiple social problems, poverty, crime, low skills and unemployment. Ross Hall has set up a food bank at the rectory and is starting to tackle the parish's multiple social problems. But where clergy make the most difference, they can prove the most reluctant to go. Robert Piggott on a north-south divide in